see how strong this one is. Stop it bouncing around. I'm just going to cover it with a cloth. We need 60 minimum. We're already over. That looks good. Three times what we need. 250. That's a good one. Let's move it to the second one. Shut her up. Don't need any flying projectiles. Over 200. Yeah, that's a good one. Over 300. Hi guys, welcome to another video. We here at our test station. We've been testing welded fins. We've been making these for a while now and testing them at great lengths. We found there's a big variation from welder to welder, person to person welding. And uh, we finally think we've solved the issues of getting consistency. Um, as you know, a single 16 mil rubber max strain is pulling about 60 kilos. We wanted to go to at least three times that to be 100% sure. So we found impurities in the metal can cause them to fail. We've had most of them get well over 200. A few have failed around the 80, 90, which is still strong enough, but we want to have consistency. We think we finally solved the problem. The latest three we've made today, we're going to be testing now. The reason we're doing this is these, the pin spears and wire fin spears, we have to still drill holes through the spear. That still weakens the spear to some degree. It is generally stronger than a notch spear, but there is still a weakening. In this state, there's no holes through the shaft. We grind a little flat and weld the tab into position. These are obviously not spears. These are just set up for the jig, so we can now load them. This is not the finished product either. All we're doing here is testing the weld and how well it holds. Let's put these to the test. So how we're setting this up is we have a piece of spear shaft clamped solidly, pinned into position, orientated right. We have a piece of timber under it to stop any flex. And then we're hauling with a loop of Dyneema we don't want to haul perfectly straight because on a gun, you will have a slight bit of upward force. So there you can see it's hooked onto the tab. We have a washer we're setting up underneath. That's just changed that tension, basically giving it worst possible angle. We then cover it with a cloth just to prevent anything airborne. And now we can start loading it. 70 is all it requires for a 16 mil band. Two hundred is about the max the mechanism can handle, so anything two hundred is good. Here we go. Over two hundred. Let's move it to the second one. They are in tension with the second one. Let's test that. Already at 100. Let's keep her going. Let's keep going, see how far it goes. We have had these over 300 already. Here we go. I don't know what that broke at. Well over 200. It did haul the pin off. As you can see, we've had many of these here. We've been testing a lot of them. We now quite happy to now go into production. The finishes will be a lot better. We still have to do all the appropriate polishing. These are just raw straight out the welder and ready to go. Hi guys. 
We're back at the test station. As you've seen in the previous video, we did quite a lot of testing, came up with some fairly good results in the end. Although we said we were going to production, we've held back a bit. We've now decided to try a slightly different type of steel in terms of the actual fin itself. I've got three, one set up already and another two. We going to test these. We hope they're slightly better. We changed our procedures ever so slightly and uh, this is where we're going to be testing them. All set up exactly the same way. Dynema on the hook, slightly raised with a washer. We're going to shut it up and hopefully we don't get any flying projectiles. Anything 180 kilos and up is good. 60 is about what the rubbers will pull. Hundred and eighty is around about three times. Knots on the Dyneema are tensioning up. Might not have enough stroke. There we go. I think the Dyneema slipped there. Yes, we had problem with the Dyneema knot. Fin didn't break off. Knot itself, I hadn't tensioned enough. Let me make a triple knot rather than a double. Stand by for this. Okay, set up again. New Dyneema loop. Same setup as before, washer in place. Close it up. And let's haul on it. We got it up to 180 and we were getting slippages. So let's see where we go now. I've tensioned the knot somewhat. As you can see, it's going up a lot faster. Yeah, something broke at 250. I think it was the Dyneema knot inside. Something definitely gave a little strange. Still got 130 kilos of tension there, as you can see. I'm going to back it off. I want to test the other two without breaking the Dyneema. So that fin looks still fine. Nothing budged. That was, I think, 240 kilos. Don't worry about these other marks. Those are the previous ones we smashed off. So that one's held very well. Let's test the next two. Further investigation, you can just see that zone of the Dyneema, the inner core snapped at 240. I've got some slightly stronger Dyneema. I'm going to go and get that. I think this was an old 1.8 we used to use. I had a spool of it floating around. Uh, as I said, 180 is three times what we require. And the inner core is broken. I'm going to go and get some of our latest, newer, stronger, better Dyneema to test on the next one. Okay, back on. Second test. makes it three times. Let's just take it to 250 if it doesn't break. That's 250 on sample two. Let's put sample three in. Okay, that's number two. Still looking perfect. 250 kilos. Let's try number three. Okay, test number three. Let's see how this one goes. One eighty, plenty good enough. Took the others up to two fifty. I'm going to just keep going with this one. And there she broke, or well, something broke. Double Dyneema snapped. 
No way is we ever going to put that sort of load onto that fin. Looking at it now, exactly the same as the other two. No distortion. So they're easily handling 250 kilos. Yeah, the other two. No distortion. We're going to analyze these even closer. There's ways of testing if there's any cracks. And uh, we're going to test that under a bit of a microscope and make sure those welds are perfect. Hope you enjoyed that video. Stand by for the next.